Uh, well, let's speak now to Frances Gilbert, teacher and author of Working the System, how to get the very best out of state schools. Now, Frances, you know, this brings me back to an incident that happened a number of years ago. Apparently, what's happened here is the row all started after a TikTok video claimed this eight-year-old had been bullied by pupils. It's clear from the reports that have been commissioned that that hasn't happened. And it just seems to me the Muslim renter mob have piled in, much as they did to that poor teacher who had death threats and had to go into hiding uh, discussing a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad during lesson time. How on earth, if we're going to get the best out of our state schools, are schools supposed to react when situations become inflamed so readily like this? Yes, obviously this is a deeply troubling situation and I would like to, you know, uh, say that the, the school clearly is, is trying its best to, to solve a very, very complex and difficult situation. The uh, political context of this is uh, very, very heated, and I think that schools, you know, have to be extremely careful. And I do think, obviously, it's incumbent upon parents to make sure that their child is is in compliance with the with the uniform rules. Um, and that wasn't a sort of political thing at all, but it seems to have sort of um, led to a really, really tricky situation. Personally, I am all in favour. I run now an MA in Creative Writing and Education, which really looks at how to deal with these sorts of situations by getting um, different parents and teachers together to talk and, and work through, you know, and listen to each other um, and, and find out actually what's going on. It feels like there's kind of been a breakdown of communication. So I do think that, um, you know, obviously it's a very, very tense situation. I thought the report that you, that Nick gave was, was excellent in its sort of balance there. So, um, you know, my heart goes out to the parents and and the, the teachers at that school because it, it's, it's a really really a tricky situation and i think that dialogue and conversation is the best way forward and being creative about that you know getting and sit getting people to sit down together and and talk about what what their issues are in a safe environment is really important uh, talking francis about safe environments so you've no doubt seen the front page of the times today uh, and uh, we are asking our audience today, how do we take back control of our schools? Because it looks like we've lost control of them uh, to the extent that teachers at some schools are having to lock themselves into safe rooms uh, for fear of being attacked by uh, pupils during breaks. I mean, what the hell is going on? I mean, again, you know, obviously there are these extreme examples and in my own career, I encountered them as a young teacher, uh, particularly when I was not so experienced in a school that wasn't that, that well run. I would like to reassure uh, parents that the vast majority of schools are very well behaved and the teachers do a great job, uh, you know, often dealing with um, some students who, who present really difficult behaviour. I do think, again, you know, um, schools need support and resources. Um, I, I think that a, a lot of the kind of cuts that have happened, particularly to, you know, getting rid of um, people like education welfare officers that can actually coordinate between um, troubled families and the school, as it does cause problems because then there's a breakdown once again of communication. And um, you often have, you're presented with sometimes quite alienated students coming in school, carrying a lot of anger that is really difficult for teachers to deal with if they don't have the proper resources. Uh, what are your opinions on what's happened to uh, Catherine Burbel Singh and the Michaela schools, where she had said, uh, look, no praying in the school. We try and run a secular student body here. We all have vegetarian meals together. No particular rights for particular religions or cultures or creeds. It's a flat rule for everybody. And now she is being uh, taken to court over that particular policy. Has she got the right approach to this? I mean, I actually have uh, visited that school and, you know, Catherine is an amazing, um, obviously inspirational head. Um, personally, I, I don't uh, totally agree with her approach, but I would support the school. And, you know, the, the, the point is that 
if you uh, sign up and go to that school, it's very clear what is involved. And it's that sort of parent teacher contract that, you know, parents need to abide by. And, and that's what she's been very clear about that. There's no kind of ambiguity about her approach. And so, you know, again, my heart goes out to that school because it, it, it seems to be caught up in a, in a wider sort of political situation, which is really, really difficult. And let's see, you know, how this unfolds in court because it, it, mm. it's, it's yeah. really complex it's and a dangerous um, you know, it's going to have an effect isn't it upon schools yeah. if if one if an adjudication goes one particular way absolutely uh listen francis thank you so much for talking to us uh, fascinating stuff